for. Good evening, and I'd like to welcome you to the Joanne Michaels Show, speaking out on the unspeakable. Uh, today I'm honored to have with me five very prominent citizens of Ulster County, uh, Dr. Sheldon Feldman, who is a breast cancer surgeon and who started the uh, breast center at Benedictine Hospital. Uh, my second guest will be Harriet Isles, who has done extensive research on the corn, the aerial corn spraying in Ulster County, specifically in Hurley and Stone Ridge. And my third guest is um, actor John Hurd, who is going to discuss uh, some of these issues as a concerned citizen who has close family in the area of Hurley and Stone Ridge. Um, my fourth guest is Rick Orlando, who owns New World Home Cooking, one of my favorite restaurants in the Hudson Valley, and he will tell us how to farm corn organically. And although I'm cynical about whether this can really work, he claims that he has the latest internet research as to how this can work. Um, we were supposed to have on our district attorney, Don Williams, who is a wonderful person, but he is busy today and was not able to make it. He has assured me he'll come on the next show I do on this topic. Uh, the other person who was asked to appear on the show is our assemblyman, Kevin Cahill, who um, I must say I did vote for, but he does not feel that this show is the proper forum to air his views. Um, I am hoping he will reconsider, and uh, I hope all of you out there will write to Kevin Cahill and tell him that you would like to see him on the show. Um, thanks very much, and I would like to, with no further ado, um, introduce Dr. Feldman, who I am honored to have on my show. And there aren't very many people I'm honored to have on my show. Thanks for coming up in it's the snowstorm. It's my pleasure to be here. And you came from Manhattan, right? I did. I did. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your joining us, and there are many, many people in the county who would like to hear what you have to say. Sure. Um, you know, this is an area that I've been interested in you know, for many, many years. Um, That's the link between cancer and toxic chemicals. Right. And, right? More, and more generally, the environment. You know, we know that only a small percentage of women who develop breast cancer can we identify a true a hereditary or genetic component. Uh, you know, there's such compelling evidence um, in terms of epidemiological studies that have been done that our environment must be a huge factor in causing breast cancer to happen. The now, didn't you start a study in our county, Ulster County, uh, to link or to try to link or to try to see the connection between the spraying of chemicals for the apples and the corn, which are big industry here in our county, and the incidence of cancer, which as um, many of you might know, the cancer statistics county by county were just released in the year 2000. Right. And, and New Paltz and Hurley have some of the highest rates in the state. Is that correct? Right. Well, specifically the zip code data that was released by the state health department, um, specifically relating to breast cancer, there really were only three zip code areas uh, where the incidence was significantly higher than expected. And those three were New Paltz, Hurley, and Milton, oh, Milton. Uh, which are the, the apples, areas yeah. we know that are agriculturally uh, very active. And you know, our area, um, being agricultural based and being near the Hudson River, you know, certainly um, is food for thought in terms of being in a in an area where the incidences might be higher. You know, this research is very, very difficult to do because the uh, the techniques that are used to really verify it scientifically are not well established. Uh, what we did in our study, uh, and we're still waiting for the final data set to come, although we have early results which certainly suggest an important linkage, is for 120 patients of mine who are undergoing breast surgery. All residents of Ulster? All, all residents of Ulster County. Uh, we actually measured, there have been some studies published in the past uh, questioning whether blood levels of uh, pesticides, uh, chlorinated pesticides, uh, really did correlate well with breast cancer risk. Uh, but we took it a bit further. We actually measured both uh, blood levels for chemicals like pesticides and PCBs, uh, but also at the time of surgery we removed a small amount of fatty tissue from the breast itself, because to me it really doesn't make that much sense to really study the blood, although we think there's a correlation. Really, the end organ is the breast, so we want to know what the levels of these chemicals are really in the breast per se, and compared a group of women who had breast cancer, the control group of women who had benign uh, breast disease, to see if the levels were higher or not, and the preliminary results suggest that they are higher, although so we don't have the... people who were exposed to the <laughs> ...who were exposed, right. The other thing that we did 
um, is we developed a very detailed life history questionnaire, actually much more detailed and pointed uh, than the study that had been done on Long Island. Right, uh, the one where Jerry, um, I heard her speak at Benedictine right. the night of that blizzard. Right. It, she was quite impressive. Right. She linked to the, the toxic chemicals that Long Island people put on their lawns, right. which I'd never even thought of that. But that, those chemicals happen to be, they go right into the aquifer, into the wells, and, and that's why we heard Long Island has a breast cancer epidemic, because it's all half a million pounds, she said, of chemicals a year go into the aquifer in Long Island. Right. There are other areas, too. Cape Cod, for example, where the water table is relatively uh, restricted to the population base, has one of the highest incidents in the country. So as you begin to look at some of these areas, you see that there's clearly you know, suggestive evidence of a linkage. The, the reason these questionnaires are helpful is that we, what we hope to do is as we identify women who have very high levels of these chemicals in their body, that we can then back, backtrack and looking at their life questionnaire, basically in terms of their environmental exposure, you know, see if we can really get more clues in terms of you know, where their exposure may have come from. You know, professional golfers, golf courses have been you know, terrible. You know, Arnold Palmer is now a big advocate and has done a lot of important work for, for prostate cancer. I lived across the street from a golf course, but because my house was high up on a hill and the golf course was low, the, drain, the way the water drained the chemicals, it didn't affect us. So even though we lived across the street, you know, so it's, you have to check. Now there is a place that you can get your water checked very inexpensively. And I, I will, on another show, give people the address and the phone number, because anybody who lives in Hurley, Milton, New Paltz, and is in the um, spray areas. I mean, with, with Hurley, you know that from July 1st through Labor Day, there is spraying, aerial spraying, every single day. And there is what is called aerial drift of some of the most poisonous neurotoxins known to man drifting into people's homes, on the, into their swimming pools, onto their barbecues, onto their cars. Now I drive on Route 209 for business, and in July and August I take alternate routes. I don't go, I mail everything. But I guess some people can't do that. Right, I mean, it's, I mean it certainly can't be healthy. You know, um, the, the definite linkage though, the science is very difficult to do. So what we really want well, to do they, is, by, is by uh, increasing awareness and studies like this, which really are pilot studies, I mean they're not going to be the final answer, uh, that we can begin you know, to, to look towards bigger agencies and certainly in the medical world, you know, some of the national uh, cancer societies and surgical oncology mm -hmm. societies are very interested in this work and as we come forward with some data suggesting uh, the linkage, then I think that it will be looked at in, a, in well, a more careful way. One of the problems that I had, obviously I wanted to have one of the corn farmers on my show you know, I contacted, hey, I don't want these guys to sue me, you know, they're very litigious. So um, I, t I called um, one that my friend John Hoyt suggested, and the guy practically hung up on me when I told him what I was doing. I said, I have these people coming, and this is who's on the panel, we'd love to have your input as to what you're doing and the way you're doing it. We, I really feel you need to talk to us, the people. I don't think that's a forum that I want to be a part of, and he hung up the phone. Now, I then called uh, Bruce Davenport, and uh, Bruce Davenport is a, a very intelligent man, and I had talked to him in the past about it, and he said that if I sent him a list of questions and a tape of this show, he would um, come on my next show to talk about it. I think we're having a show here, but we need to have the people who are doing the right. spray, right? I mean, the chemical people, we, they have a point of view. Hey. Well they, well, they well they live there, you know. It's not well, they live there, the and one of the there, right, yeah. and one of the largest corn farmers' family is riddled with cancer, from what I've heard from several people. But of course, he doesn't think there's a connection. Right. Now that's really the problem. Well, the anecdotes, I mean, the anecdotes are really not that helpful. You know, it's, right. they say well, a thousand anecdotes doesn't equal one well-controlled study, and that's true. Because anecdotes well, unless do, the anecdote is your family, unless it's well, you, you who still has don't cancer. prove cause and effect, and, and you know, unless you begin to get some real science behind. Uh, these kind of discussions, it becomes just mm -hmm. that, people talking and sort of thinking like they're making some advances, but you're really not, you know, until we really begin to, uh, to get some data. And the data is difficult because, you know, people live but not in just one place. You know, that's why this yeah. environmental yeah, life exposure right. questionnaire is very, very tricky because people are moving all over and, you know, and they've had all kind of environmental factors and a lot of these chemicals uh, are not short-lived. For example, you know, in our study, we find very substantial levels of DDE, in, which is a DDT derivative, you know, in the breast tissue and blood, 
of many younger patients. Now, Is since DDT the has been has been mm -hmm. banned, you know, since the early mm -hmm. 1970s, right? So they haven't had any active fresh exposure, but yet we know that that these chemicals stay in the environment for a very very long time. I mean, PCBs have been found, you know, in the blubber in the blubber that's eaten by the Inuits, you oh, know, in, in more than part of this world. I mean, you know, there's no more <laughs> the remote travels. part of the world, right? Exactly. Chemicals travel. So well, that's difficult. Can can the average person like me or you go and have their body tested for chemical? Holdings. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know what you call there are labs um, out of New York State uh, where, uh, in, in the context of a clinical study, where blood can be sent to to be analyzed. No, just so you would know. Labs. Like if I knew. But that these I labs had will not do them outside, of, and, and I think they're right not, not to. Outside of New York State. In other words, the labs that I've worked with outside of New York State mm -hmm. um, will only accept specimens if it's done in the context of a clinical research oh, study. Oh, I see. You in can't words, just go as a consumer. Right, right. Or, because or it's sort of not ready. In a way, it's not ready for prime time because we really don't know what the norm should be. I mean, our, our, well, nothing. our intuition tells us, right, it should nothing, be very, zero. very low or right. zero, but we don't have, you know, big pools of blood samples from norm normative populations in terms of what's acceptable, how many parts per billion, you know, there should be or shouldn't well, be. So it's yeah. tricky. So what you can do is you can get some information which will alarm people, which you don't really have great therapy for, and all of a sudden just create tremendous anxiety without really being productive. So, you know, you need to, to, to have some framework if you're going to do these kind of blood tests so that yeah, there can be, a, you know, if we want to look at it, and there are some protocols out there uh, to detoxify, for example, patients who have very high levels that, um, that can try to reduce their levels. But again, they still need to be studied. They're not right. verified. So it's all very new. The science is not strong behind it. The support is not that right. strong behind it. So and, and the legal system is not strong behind it because what I found when I went to the town, I'm a resident of West Hurley, which is the town of Hurley. When I went to the town meeting, um, I couldn't understand the attitude, which was, hey, we went to school with these people, and they're good people, and they're just trying to make a living. So there's a childhood cancer epidemic here in Hurley. Who's to say it's the spraying of the cornfields? Now this is what I see the problem is, is it's easier to sue General Electric or a large corporation than it is to sue your neighbor. And that's really the problem in Hurley. The corn farmers are decent, hardworking people who've been there longer than the people right. that own the homes. These homes were built in a cornfield. Now I am having on my friend John Hoyt, who was not only a realtor, but an attorney. He had to be in court today, otherwise he would have been here. And he will say on my show that he would never, ever sell anyone a house as a realtor without telling them about the problem in Hurley, but saying, get your water tested, look into these chemicals in the, in the, in the place. So what I would like to find out is who are the realtors on these houses where the people get cancer or moving out of town, and the realtors are sending people and you know this is a problem right clearly there's a conflict of interest yes and it makes it very difficult absolutely so um, what I, I was going to ask you also do you think that the study that you are doing about the connection will be finalized or wrapped up as best you can do within the coming months because I would we like do. to have you on the show when the we results hope, are done we hope that the majority of the uh, of the data will be will be completed within the next two months. Well, so would you that, be willing to sure. come back? Oh, I would really, really enjoy having absolutely. you. I think uh, it would be more tangible, that. and I think that we have all at this point just a trend. Um, but I think that this will, you know, be tremendous uh, fuel for many, many more studies. I mean, you know, what I hope to do with the study is to bring it to my national uh, surgical oncology organization. You know, and then that this will be a pilot that can be done at you know 100 sites around mm -hmm. the country. You I know, see. because every environmental situation is unique. Right. You know, and the more data that we have, you know, the more support we have. Well, that, the that would be great. And well, thanks very much for sure. sharing your information with us. I am sure that everyone in Ulster, as well as Dutchess County, which is not, the, you know, things can drift across the river. And the Dutchess County has a certain amount of agriculture still. Also, I don't right. know uh, that it's as serious here. Their cancer rate is, is very low, right. uh, comparatively. So what I would like is for you to come back at a future date and discuss the details of the results, and I'm sure it'll be of interest to everyone in sure. the Hudson Valley as it. well as here. Thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure. And have a good trip back. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.
I'd like to welcome my next guest, Harriet Isles, who lives in Woodstock now, where I live. And I met her, or I heard of her, when I was on one of my research trips to Hurley, trying to find out what they were spraying out of those airplanes every day for 60 days and nights out of those airplanes. So I would ask around, and someone said to me, you really ought to talk to Harriet Isles. And I said, well, where does she live? And they said, well, she sold her house in Hurley and moved to Woodstock because of the aerial spraying of the corn. So I said, okay. And then I uh, looked you up in the phone book. Wrong spelling. I couldn't and you. couldn't find you, but I did track you down. I always find who I need to find. So anyway, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for coming Thank out you. in the snowstorm to Rhinebeck, which is my favorite town in the Hudson Valley. And I would like you to tell the people of Ulster and Dutchess counties what you discovered was being sprayed because I filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the people in Ulster County and they they were very very standoffish about my poking around asking these questions so I think uh, to your credit you may have found something that even they don't know or they are unwilling to release to people like me. Um, the information that I have is sort of old in terms of the chemicals that were used in the early 90s, 92, 93, maybe 94. But cancer is a disease with a memory, oh, yeah. lest we forget. So people who are exposed, you know, the it's farmers... It's not a sudden thing. <laughs> it's like a... Yeah, the farmers are now saying they want to go organic. Well, that's just great. Meanwhile, all these people have been living there for 20 years, getting sprayed on in July and August, and hey, they're, uh, what did Dr. Feldman say? They're fat tissues or, fat tissue. you know, all yes. absorbing it. So. It's all right if your information is old. You're not a journalist. You're reporting on toxic chemicals. But right? part of the fact that this information is old is very interesting because um, the, the insects are developing constant Immunity? immunities. So they have to, any information from, from a few years ago is going to be dated because they have to keep changing because the um, because of the immunities. And people should know first, pesticides, the word pesticide includes herbicides, which are used to kill vegetation, rodenticides, which are obviously to kill mice and rats and voles and things, and insecticides. So it covers a wide range of stuff. And uh, for, oh, I want to go back and correct something quickly. The house um, in Marbletown is, wasn't sold, and uh, my now ex-husband lives there. He moved back. You know, my and show I, usually deals with divorce, with but divorce. I was actually, I was hoping to keep divorce uh, out of this show, because there's only one thing worse than divorce, and that's cancer. So uh -huh. I thought, but of course, you had to bring it up. So since you brought it up, I know so well what you were talking about, where somebody gets the house. No, no, actually that's not, that wasn't, it was very amiable at the time. Okay. We were lucky enough to be able to move. And because of the situation, at least in my mind, of being sprayed all the time against my will, poisoned against my will. Um, that sounds like a novel, yeah. poisoned against my well, will. Well, I mean, oh. every word to do with this subject leads to another subject because Americans guard fervently their right to poison themselves, their environment, their children, and their neighbors. It is defended more strongly than the right of, 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 of any other right in this country. If you tell somebody they can spray, you will get responses you won't believe. What about the NRA? You can't shoot. You know, well, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> but, <laughs> and um, I ain't Rosie O'Donnell. Okay? The, the I'm not going there. It's yeah. interesting what well, Dr. Feldman um, mentioned DDT, mm -hmm. and I would like to say that we are under the impression that uh, DDT was banned, but it isn't. It is still manufactured. In it's just overseas. banned in this country, but most of our fruits and vegetables are come imported. to us from other countries, so the DDT that we refuse to be allowed to be manufactured in this country is 
is sprayed I, on the bananas in Costa Rica exactly. and comes back to us, and so we're touching it every time. Yes. I buy my bananas in the health food store for that reason, because I went to Costa Rica, oh, and the chemical true. people were coming down with cancer, the guys who were spraying the chemicals Coffee, on Dole fruit, Plantation. Dole, yeah. all yeah. those things. Well, yeah. Dole is like yeah. owns it. It's terrible. Um, I have a bag with me that weighs about 25 pounds, and it's full of information about the adverse effects of pesticides on on chemical on workers with the chemicals right. on the farm Cause, workers because the farm workers get the worst of it. You know, all the, the people, time it's right. their they, That's how they have to but live. But you know, they're immigrants. Yeah. Many of them are not white. These people. Oh, well, that's you know, another issue too. Well, I mean, and these people cannot afford attorneys. They're not even middle class. So if middle class people get bankrupted by the attorneys and the judges, can you imagine these poor people who get into this country, however they do, they're going to do anything for those corn farmers, won't they? So that's the problem too. And that's one of the things that's very disturbing to me that no one talks about. Everyone's worried about the residents of Hurley, which is the wealthiest town in Ulster <coughs> County, I might add, with people who are not doing anything and have the wherewithal to do it. Well, money's not worth anything if you lose your health. Well, they are not even getting an attorney. This is one instance where I would say get an attorney who specializes in toxic torts. Those people should be organized hiring an attorney years ago and suing the farmers for what they're doing. Now, one woman named Mary Ann Darrow did just that, and one of the largest corn farmers took her into court and sued her to shut her up and prevent her from organizing the community. It this is what happened because it was illegal slap suits were were are illegal in New York State. They're supposed to be. Well, but that's what happened. I think all everyone out there should write Mike Cavanaugh. He's the judge, and he will be hearing the trial. The trial it's going to trial in June. No kidding. No kidding. I think we should all show up at the courthouse. Yes. I intend to be there because I really want to see this. Well, let's go back to Marion Darrow. Um, it's because of her that I have in my possession the product labeling from 93, 94, 92. And uh, it was given to us. I think Mary Ann Darrow demanded that we know, believe. And my memory is just a little fuzzy from back there. Her husband died of cancer. I guess so. Yes, he did. Well, it was the office of Kevin Cahill that gave us, that contacted the Gills to say. Who are the Gills? I, we have the mentioned their oh, the name. Gills why don't you tell everyone out there who the gills are? The gills own know. a huge amount of the acreage that's in corn farming in the what is that what is an ancient riverbed. You can see it when you drive down there. You're driving in an ancient riverbed. That's why the geese migrate up there all the time. You know, there's you see huge flocks of geese in the fall and the spring, because it's an ancient riverbed, and that's why it's such a rich um, farming area. It's very fertile and that's very that fertile, fertile it's wonderful mm -hmm. soil. Um, which it's also surprises very me because they use a, they have a, a mo I think it's called monoculture. They plant corn over and over and over right. again, which you know they don't let it go fast. Never pleat the soil. Who knows? But I don't they're know. living through chemistry. Don't the chemicals help undeplete the soil? Maybe. Well, the gills own mm -hmm. um, the gill farms. There's a farm stand. They are huge corn raisers, and that's who the gills are. So who are they? Who are they in litigation with? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? Um, the, the product labeling came from the gills. Oh, it was see. given to Kevin Cahill, and somehow I, we were there. We went to Kevin Cahill's office. So to Kevin talk Cahill about this. knows a lot about this situation from years ago, correct? From years ago. Hey, we'll have to refresh his memory. Um, well, he's a politician, so he has to be very careful. Oh no! Well, I, I think there would need to be more politicians who aren't careful. Oh, you could also be interesting. You should get uh, the Daily Freeman in on this because the Daily Freeman oh, is no, very they, biased towards. Of course they are. To the, in fact, totally. Because, because they advertise. Advertising. I ran a magazine. Advertising is what determines the editorial, unless someone like me is the editor. Now, I have contacted Ira Fussfeld, the publisher of the Freeman. He likes me but he doesn't want to have any of my activities no. published in his paper. He doesn't think this show is germane to the people of Ulster County. And I believe that Ira ought to take another look. Because Ira, you and Kevin Cahill, I would like to have you both on the same show. We ought, these are people, these are gentlemen who I have great respect for, 
But I think that, like you say, they're so careful. They have to be. Careful. No, they don't have to be. They no, choose to, to be, be careful, to Harriet. Be. And that's why I'm doing this. Politics because, is no, like that. It's not, politics is not like that. We need more people in politics who will take a stand. We need more people like District Attorney Don Williams, who doesn't care about politics. And he's coming on the show. And Sheriff Richard Bockelman, who came on and talked about what he did when the Ulster County Family Court awarded his mother $10 a month child support. She went to work as a waitress, and he and his brother collected quarters off the kitchen table, and that's what they lived on. So Ulster County Family Court has had a history of this. And our sheriff, I am pleased to say, had the guts to come on my show, unlike other gentlemen, and talk about exactly what the problem is, which is people are so careful. We have a president who's going to be careful. Now, oh, what? As everything we you've saying, mentioned leads to a, a huge other topics. There's something I'm, we haven't really. Um, there's there's so much. Um, the thing that I really want to say personally about these these things. Well, one of the products that that was used on the fields right now is called methyl parathion, and that that product is has been banned in this country. You can imagine how bad it must be if it's banned in America. Yes. It's banned worldwide. I think we're the last ones to do it. Is it DDT, like DDT? No. Or worse? Um, DDT is a different kind of thing. The chemicals that are used at the moment are what are called neurotoxins. They're very fast acting and they break down into other chemicals very quickly. Um, DDT didn't do that. DDT is still everywhere. DDT is in the animal life in the Esopus Creek because the DEC tested. They did respond. It was about the only way they did respond. They and came, the dead animals. They, they came, and no, they took an, live animals, which I was very sorry for, had no idea. They would take live creatures out of the stream and then they put them in a blender and they test all their body tissues and they found the breakdown products of DDT, which are DDE and other things like that, which are obviously persist in the environment in a terrible way for many, many years. If water is tested in that area, that's probably what will be found. The chemicals um, that are being used at the moment, I personally believe, won't be sh found in the water. They won't. If anything's found in the water, it's from other sources it'll be from. Fuel t buried fuel tanks, it'll be from uh, who knows what. They'll find heavy metals, they'll find things like that, trichloroethylene. Trichloroethylene. Okay. But they won't find these because they dissipate quickly, but they do tremendous damage in the, the little while that they're acting. They're neurotoxins. They were developed during, <laughs> most of them, during World War II to poison not bugs, but people. And they found out what an incredible power they had to destroy the nervous system. And I mean, if you you have an extra half an hour, we can read all the horrible, okay, well, I, the horrible, no, I'm just, I'm just being. No, but what I'm thinking know, is that if anybody wants to get this effects. information from you, do you have a website? I don't. Well, no. I, hey, I do. Now. But you know, let me, just, let me say this. There and I'll be glad to put it on my website. There isn't one bit of information that I have that isn't available to everyone. And if I, do I have credentials? I do. My credentials are that I'm concerned, I'm interested, and I can read. What do you and do that for a living? That is exactly life? what I did to find out all this stuff mm. I can read, and I want to read. There are a few of us left. Let me tell you. What do I do? I paint. I'm a obscure local artist. Are you really yeah. a painter? I am a painter, okay. but I paint animals, and that's how I got involved in all of this. I have not used pesticides of any kind with my since the early 60s. Oh, right. You wash your sweaters by hand, your coats, Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. And just lately, I mean, there's so many things you miss when you think about these things. But we're talking about the, this aerial spray and it's coming onto the land. The biggest way this gets into your home is you walk through it and you walk onto your carpets. Your carpets have already been treated with a pesticide at the manufacturer. They have formaldehyde in the glue. We're talking about an incredible chemical soup that can never be properly analyzed. You can't. My, my fear with these chemicals is that when you drive through a cloud of spray on 209, perhaps you're under a doctor's care and you've taken 
a blood pressure medicine. Maybe you had a headache that morning and you took Tylenol as well. You've been in an office that had a new carpet and you've just driven through a cloud of pounce or larvin or methylparathion. Or neurotoxins. Well, that's what they are. <laughs> what can, how can anyone ever say what those chemicals combined will create? And I think that the, the, the research of the moment is very linear. It's very uninclusive. Um, it doesn't take those things into account. Well, Shelley Feldman was talking yes. about that. But sure. no, yeah. it can't, yeah, and it, it can't. Never it's very hard. Will. It never will, because it just can't. In this room, there's probably formaldehyde behind this stuff. In these chairs, if these chairs burn, they give off cyanide gas. Why does the FAA allow airplane seats to be made of foam that, when it burns, gives off cyanide gas that kills you in six seconds? Well, why are they, why are the seats why flammable? Allowed? Period. That's, I mean, that's my it's question. It's crazy. It's hey, crazy. They, that's it. But, but anyway, Harry, we're running out of time. But no. what I wanted, you're going to have to come back, <laughs> and I am going to. This is going to motivate me to get into the high tech world of website. My son set a website up for me, and I don't know how to use it, uh -huh. but I am going to because I can put the chemicals that are being sprayed in Hurley on my website. And you, if we don't have a website, we'll figure it out, out together. I, well, we will. Can I, do I have two seconds to say it's, this all starts in your own home? It starts under your kitchen sink and in your garage and in your garden. You cannot go after the farmers and you cannot go after the manufacturers and you cannot go after GE if you own GE products, if you have ortho under your sink, if you spray your house and you treat your carpets and you have a flea collar on your dog, you cannot blame anyone. It starts under your kitchen sink. Well, I'm going to have some, really? someone on to talk about the organic solution to corn spraying with organic pesticides or organic, I don't there know what to call it. There aren't any. But well, Rick it's Orlando, how you live your life. It's Rick how Orlando you live your life. will differ with you on that. But in any case, I agree with you. Wherever possible, I don't use chemicals. But we are the exception to the rule. Anyway, yes, I do we not, need to change that. I do not want to get short shrift to my friend, John Hurd. So we have to stop. I'm out of here. But I just wanted to thank you for <laughs> thank coming you for on this. and telling us what is the unspeakable. All the wonderful chemicals. Better living through chemistry in the 50s, they used don't to say. Don't buy it, kids. Anyway, I hope our kids, our gen and generation, my son's generation, will learn from our mistakes here. Anyway, thanks a lot thanks for coming, much. and I hope you will come back again. Oh, welcome back. I, only, I just got started. I know. The shopping bag <laughs> is filled. It can meet 10 shows. <laughs> You'll come back with the corn farmers. Real oh, big. Big. perfect, perfect. So anyway, thanks again, Harriet, and um, have Thank a you. good trip back to the other side of the river. The other side of the river. Yeah. We're live. I'd like to welcome <laughs> my friend John Hurd, who is laughing. Who's Dern? I've been eating corn, I think. Mmm. Is this why? I can't wait to go jump in the East Opus Creek now at the Marble Town Rec Center. Thanks, Harriet. Well, Whew. I'm not going to join you. I will not join you. Great to be here. As usual, we are the couple that make the judges in Ulster County and Dutchess County happy people. I mean, the Man, judges. What a group. Ugh. We sort of keep them on their toes, Ugh. or maybe you know, maybe you that's why we get bad, bad decisions in court because we don't say nice things about them in public uh, forums. What do they know about children? Nothing. What do they know about farming? Less. What do they know about snow clearance? <laughs> I can tell you live in uptown. What do all three of these things have in common? Chemicals. <laughs> toxic family court, toxic corn growing, and toxic chemicals on every road and, and uh, community in, in, uh, in New York State. But if it weren't so, I mean, for the when toxic. Harriet says you're tracking the stuff into the house, consider, consider what you're tracking into the house after you get out of your car in the snow. Because within 15 minutes, Ulster County has 5,000 trucks out there spewing chemicals at the, the first sight of a, of a snowflake. There's the, the, the day and age of the peace of the snow, snowfall is over. But we wouldn't be here today if they weren't out. I wouldn't be out in an ice storm. Maybe we though. shouldn't be here today. Maybe we should be home, growing our own corn, taking care of our own children. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, John, for joining me. Oh, you always find pleasure. some way to humiliate me that I haven't thought of humiliating myself. Um, what? No, uh, Lyndon Johnson. I lived through that. I don't have to. Okay, January 30th is Lobby Day. Tuesday, January 30th, Lobby Day in Albany. For all you people who want to join me, you can email me at my new website, Joanne Michaels at iVillage.com and, and join me to come and... iVillage? Is that like the Hillary Clinton thing? It takes a village? Wait, my son, my son put... I don't even know what iVillage is. He said that's your email address. Have it will you be seen good any for villages anywhere? <laughs> Has anybody here seen any villages? I don't understand the internet. I think village is a euphemism for government. What do you all think? It takes a government. <sighs> to what? Well, that's why we're so glad you're on, because you're pointing out that the government has a hand in all of the things that we see in our community, like the destruction of a beautiful traffic circle. Oh. Which everybody, I think, is crazed about. And, and, and yet, where were we when it was going on? The destruction of the beautiful view of the Ryan Cliff Kingston Bridge. Absolutely gorgeous view of the Hudson Valley, gone forever. Looks like a prison corridor now when you go across it, thanks to Mr. Garrity or whatever his name Garrigan. is. Garrigan. Garrigan, over there at the Bridge and Tunnel Authority. And now you have that uh, terrifyingly ugly uh, encampment over on Exit 19, where we live. That, that's Kingston. Exit 19 is, a, is another uh, way of describing Kingston to the New York State Thruway Authority. Mr. Uh, Tanner up there in the, the New York State Thruway Authority describes Kingston as Exit 19. And Exit 19 has about, have you noticed, it's got like 50 yellow trucks now. They started out with two. It's got an encampment. It's got piles of gravel that are like three, four stories high. It's extraordinary. I mean, how the government has moved into this area and exploited it. And Kevin Cahill, you want to talk about Kevin Cahill? I know, I don't know anything about Kevin Cahill, so. I voted for him. Except that a lot of people vote for him. I voted he's for a, him. He's a, I guess he's Irish, so. Are you Irish too? Yeah, a little bit. But everyone's Irish. He's got this thing that he's so proud of called the shovel ready law, which I'm curious about considering the the contamination of IBM that the and uh, who else was here that left us this residue of PCBs, General Electric. Why make the Catskills a hub for industrial investment? So what is this law that, that Kevin is proud to have been a part of where he's called it the shovel-ready law? Did it pass? Does that mean that somebody can come down my street and stick a shovel in the ground and anoint it uh, industrial, an industrial plot? But did this law pass, or is it, was it enacted? Yeah, he's very, he's very proud of this law. He, wanted to re he ran for re-election this past year on the basis of that law was included in all his literature. Shovel ready? Shovel I, ready. I see people with shovels in their hand, ready to shovel that stuff. Yeah, but they're usually okay. my son's age. And how old is that? So well, I mean, not, not, not to pick on my son, but the fact that I'm saying is that why would you make it easy for corporations to come here and dig up the ground and pollute the way they've done and exploit and move on? I mean, why would anybody be proud of that? To make jobs, because there's no employment These here. These jobs, I think people that work at Walmart, what do they make? Eight, seven dollars an hour, I think. Six fifty-seven. And what's the life expectancy of a Walmart in an area like this? Uh, to eternity. Eternity. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think, I think they it's right in. First of all, they chased them out of Lake Champlain area. They chased them out of uh, upstate. But people in, in Kingston are glad to have it. The, sh the store is always crowded. So what we're catering to is the lower, uh, whatever percent of the population that doesn't work when we destroy the environment in which most of the rest of us live. A handful of people work at Walmart content compared to the rest of the community. This is what true. Absolutely. And many of them are come from Dutchess County because it's just over the bridge. So it's not all Ulster County people who work at Walmart. But anyway. Uh, How do we get into this? Why are we talking about Walmart on my show? I don't even shop there. Well, we're talking about the guy that's spilling pesticides all over the community of, of Hurley, Stone Ridge, Marble Town, New Paltz. Right. The collective farm. I was there one day when my son was, but they had the, what they call the, uh, what do they call it, ASCO or... ASO uh, Soccer League, and I'm here to tell you, every kid in the area is playing soccer on a Saturday and Sunday. They don't spray on the at weekends. the ASO Marble Town uh, Rec Center Soccer League, and I was there being sprayed right across the street, right directly. The street's no wider than this. Where room. was it in Hurley? Well, what's the, I don't know the name of the road. 
but the Marble Town. Marble Town. The Marble Town Rec Center is where the okay. spraying was going Marble on Town throughout the throughout the day. Throughout the day, that all the kids were collected to play soccer. Every uh, and I would I would assume what you've told me is from June through October. No, um, it, it, they start spraying the beginning of July and they spray through the end of August, sometimes early September. The thing is, they are, there's something called the Neighborhood Notification Law, which has not been enforced. In other words, they are supposed to let the neighbors know when they're going to spray. Well, they didn't let me know, because if they had let me know, I wouldn't have been there. Well, you were So maybe I can sue. And, and, and the only bad thing about this, you got to talk to a lawyer. Yeah. No, that's a no win. That's a, yeah. You can't win. And you never know. Talk you to a lawyer, you go into the courtroom in Kingston, and uh, anybody that's got uh, these politicians in their pocket and these judges, you're going you're to get killed. Well, what about Stephen Kaufman, who believes a multimillionaire should spend $31.21 a month on child support? Any of you out there in Dutchess County, I want you to contact me at my website because Stephen Kaufman is no longer in Ulster County. You have him I in Dutchess County. That, guy, that guy ruse the day he reduced my child support from $225 a month to $31.21. He's good with his math. He had his calculator handy. And I want you to know He's that for the this man has judgment of a P in a pod. So we need to get him out of office. We need to get him out of the court. Jim Brands, who is a family court judge in Dutchess County, is marvelous. And I have mentioned to J Jim Brands that something needs to be done about this. I have filed complaints in Albany about this man, but he was still reappointed because only three other people wrote letters like mine. So I urge you, if you've been in his court and you've gotten a decision like mine, it's time to start coming up to Albany on January 30th with me and talking face-to-face -to, -face to the people up there who make those decisions. God bless them. Well, so the, anyway, I was there. The helicopter was out there. The tubes run outside either side of the helicopter. The spray is about eight to ten jet streams of stuff that came swooping down no more than 20 feet off the ground uh, opposite uh, the soccer field and, and I was shocked and I was also shocked that, that was I think I was the only one that turned around and even paid any attention so that's why I'm here if you're wondering uh, my son plays soccer there a lot of children play soccer there I've heard of children in the area with brain cancer um, I don't think that there's any doubt. I think that, 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 that those of us who are playing games with statistics and research are being silly at this point in time. But this is the year 2001. We all know that these chemicals affect us. So let's get on with it, folks, and get out there and get, and get something done and, and try, to, try to restrain this or have it at least get done in an orderly fashion so that it doesn't affect the welfare of everybody in the community. Thank you. And I'm here to lend my support to that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, John, for joining me. Thank, great to be here. I wish we could get together on a this happy. Is a great show. <laughs> I wish we could get together on a happy subject. This is because we're going to do something about this, and it's going to turn out good, and it's going to be happy. We want to have okay. happy news, right? And thanks to Harriet and Doctor and yeah. next guest. Stay tuned. Yes, thank you again. And you come ice skating <laughs> with me. We're going to have good news at the end of this program. So stay tuned if you're depressed, because I have the man who has organize the ice rink in Socrates where I skate every day to ward off the cancer or whatever you're supposed to do. Okay. Thank you, John. For see you later. By. I will see you. Thank you. I'd like to welcome my next guest, Rick Orlando, who is the chef owner of New World Home Cooking, Hi. one of my favorite restaurants. Well, thank you. Anywhere in the Hudson Valley. Anywhere in the Hudson Valley. And my guidebook covers Westchester and Rockland up to Saratoga, so that's a lot of distance. It's a good guidebook, folks. You take the recommendation seriously. Hey, we're not allowed to advertise on this. This is cable. So listen, this is, this is what we've been up to, okay? This is something, a national organization called the Chef's Collaborative 2000. It was started by Alice Waters. Who should? She uh, owned Chez Panisse oh, in Chez Panisse. Berkeley, mm -hmm. and it was also founded by the Old Ways Preservation and Trust, which is a basically it, it's a it's a, a trust to uh, maintain traditional methods of agriculture of art of, of of many other things. I'm one of the chairs of the Hudson Valley area, and the mission of the Chefs Collaborative 2000 is to educate, propagate, promote sustainable agriculture in the Hudson Valley. I know that if you can get into the brain of some of the farmers here, they will understand that in the long haul, it's in their best interest 
profit-wise and in the community's best interest for them to change their practices. In other words, to how do we get there? Chemicals to chemicals. You have to use some chemicals. I had an, an well, apple farmer on, and he explained why you need chemicals to grow apples. Well, but you can you, use you you don't have to use chemicals. As we we don't you don't have to use toxic chemicals. That's for sure. Right. Um, I'm not a farmer, but I have done research on this because I've been asked to speak on this, so I'm not an idiot. I grew up on a farm, so I was a Where? farmer Where did in, you grow in up? Connecticut. My uncles Where? all had farms. I was outside of New Haven, Guilford, oh, Guilford. Madison. Okay. Yeah, I know Madison. Um, nice I remember as a little kid, all the little kids, just like in the scene of The Godfather, we got the little spray cans and went around the yard with the DDT and sprayed ourselves and everybody and played with them like they were, like they were ray guns. We played, uh, what was that show, yeah. uh, Lost in Space with the, with the DDT. So listen, we've been there, we know. I went um, out and the, um, the fog man came to my neighborhood, mm -hmm. DDT, sprayed oh, out of yeah. a truck. We used to go out and play in the fog. Well, this is, this is, this is, this is, here's some basic facts about what can be done in this area to improve the conditions of farming from an environmental standpoint. First of all, we talked about the fact that they plant the same crops in the same place all the time. Crop rotation is essential, and with proper crop rotation, the plants actually need fewer pesticides because their immune systems develop. The way the plants are grown now, they're as weak as they can possibly be. They're being sustained on chemicals. They're on life support. They have to put the chemicals in the soil because the soil is so depleted that that corn is on life support. They get a crappy yield. Did I say crappy? I'm sorry, but that's hey, a nice one. Wait, wait, wait. Howard Stern says there are seven words you cannot say on TV, but I don't know if that applies no, to cable. Right. Okay. Oh. Um, they, they don't get the yield they should be getting from the corn. And they have to use enormous amounts of chemicals to get it there. There is a lot of information through the Cornell Cooperative and the Rutgers Cooperative on Northeast organic corn growing. It's practiced. It's a growing practice. The other side of that coin is what Gary Hirschberg from Stonyfield Farm says is the win-win for a commercial entity that wants to change their conscientiousness. Wait, that's that's too much. That's that. What it means the is that win, when you do, yes, it means when you do I mean, the I'm right totally thing, confused. you also make money, and there's nothing wrong okay, with so why making you money if you're doing the, the right place. thing. Well, it's a win-win because we win. That's, that's not that's because we win because we can breathe. I don't. And like they win because reasons. they don't have to go out of business or make less money. To convince a huge company, you have to make less money so that we're all happier, it ain't going to happen. But to convince them that you can actually make more money in, a t in 7 to 12 years of investment in this changeover. Without using toxic chemicals. You can become saying. an organic you can, you can farm. You can be financially viable. Is yeah. that what you're your saying? Your costs will raise about 20% and your profit will raise about 50% because organic is a value-added product. Okay. I don't Those know bananas exactly you bought. Oh yes, you do. Those okay. bananas you buy at the health food store. Right. How much more do they, they cost? They cost me eighty-nine than the ones cents you buy instead of forty-nine union. cents okay. a pound, and I don't like buying it. But I, I just don't want to get cancer. Listen, you know, I've been divorced. I don't need the cancer. Organic so the organic what. food market <laughs> has quadrupled in the last ten years, and it's expected to increase ten to twenty-fold in the next ten years because, as our kids yeah, get as older. As our kids get older, and they start. That's not, the yeah. market. That's the market of the future. Agriculture is essential to this area. It preserves open space. It preserves beauty. It preserves a quality of life that we love. If that agriculture wasn't there, there would be condos and factories here. The agriculture is is crucial to the open space, sustaining open space. If the farmers, maybe the next generation, maybe their kids, were would. I hate to say this, but get with the program and watch where the trends are going and where the industry was going, we would be in the right direction. The information is out there. I could email it to Gil. Rutgers, uh, the co cooperative at Rutgers has an entire program on converting to an organic farm, and New Jersey is under a lot of pressure to do it. Well, of course, well, they're, they're under a lot of pressure. the highest cancer rates in the country. They're but the thing is that's interesting in what you're saying, and I remember I was the only person I knew in the 60s mm -hmm. who shopped in a health food store. Where'd it was live? very in Manhattan. Uh, in, uh, well, actually, in, when right after I got out of college in Manhattan, I know I don't never been to Forest, just Forest just Hills, wherever yeah. that is. But anyway, what I did was in 1968, I shopped in health food stores, and mm -hmm. everyone laughed at me. I got my soap, my toothpaste, everything there. Now, as the years have gone on, I have not changed my you habits. You didn't meet your husband in the health food store. See, if you did, you wouldn't be here. Which one? <laughs> I've had two. Actually, neither. One was a chain smoker. I heard it's a good place to you know, know, shop hey, for a shop But, for a but the, uh, actually, when I moved in with him, my soap and toothpaste was different than his. He used Irish Spring and Colgate. Mm, Irish Spring. I wouldn't use that. 
because it's chemicals in it. Okay, so I was one of these people who was before my time and they mm -hmm. laughed at me. Now my habits are the same and everyone's doing what I do. But the prices, the reason I'm going through this, mm -hmm. the prices at the health food store have come down. Although they're 40 cents more a pound of bananas, Joanne, we have the, the prices... cheapest food in the world. Our food, you know why, you know why we have so many toxins? No, but in the, the health the food store, organic food why is have, cheaper well, than you would... The Grand Union lettuce and the health food lettuce are the same price. The reason why we have so many toxins in our environment is because we insist on having unrealistically inexpensive food. Our food is cheaper than anywhere in the world. Gas, too. Oil. And we'll stay, yeah, stay, stay, stay on the yeah. subject here, darling. Food, okay? The reason why our food is so cheap is because we have this enormous pressure, political pressure, to keep our food cheap puts farmers out of business, it lets companies like Monsanto and ADM and DuPont create these artificially developed plants so that they can get more food per acre. Why I did, can't I did they a invest little, in organic chemicals? In the book I'm working Why on that you're going to that you're going to you're going to distribute for me locally. I did an a analogy of by feeding a family of four an organic 4 pound chicken. Oh, that chicken's $3 a pound. Right. For chicken, that's $12. Right. Organic yeah, that's potatoes, true. organic carrots, cooked with organic wine, organic herbs. That entire meal costs $16 for a family of four. Can you go to McDonald's and eat for $16 no, for a cannot. family of four? It's so simple. Learn to use the food that you have, and the food is not more expensive. If you're going to buy you know, processed food, you're going to pay a lot of money I for agree it. with you. But oh. our food is artificially deflated. We're not paying what we should pay for food. We're paying too much for real estate and not enough for food. You see, if the balance worked out a little bit better, we, it'll be a lot Now we're off. running out of time, but I want you to answer me one question because you can now talk me, and that's rare. I like this. <laughs> Why doesn't e e Lilly, Eli Lilly, Eli Lilly, mm -hmm. Monsanto, all my favorite companies, mm -hmm. and I would never buy stock in them either. Why don't they invest in organic? Because the upper middle class, uh, the baby boom people, my first are all going to buy that. My first joke that. is one million dollars. But the the real <laughs> you had to be there. But the the real thing is is it something on television? Politically, they're trying to say things to assuage these people. And actually, the forum I went to at the CIA on the restaurant of the future, there is some hope because they're they are driven by the market. You see, if there's money to be made, right. That's what I'm they're saying. seeing that there is a viable. window, that they're seeing the direction of the market. Right. I'm never going to say DuPont and Monsanto are my friends, but I do know that they're getting more and more pressure. However, it doesn't mean they're gonna, not going to export. No. I, I mean, I for, know, for those of you who use canola oil, canola oil couldn't be made in America. What? I buy it in the health food It's store. made from rape seeds. It's, it's poison. Wait. It's made in Canada because wait, they got a, wait, they, they loophole to make it in Canada. Rick. Canola means Canadian oil. No. It's made from the same stuff they made nerve wait. gas out of. I just bought canola oil at the health food store, so, at Mother Earth Health Food Store in Kingston. You're telling me that's poison? Five years off the market, betcha. What should I do with it? I just spent three dollars on this stupid bottle of canola oil. Rub it into Ooh. your skin, no. <laughs> anyway, the, the, anyway, this is this is what happens with these companies. It's just like the tobacco companies. They lose their market, they find another market. It takes a worldwide effort. It takes a long time. Hopefully, we're at the beginning of the. The optimism is that we're here and mm -hmm. we're at the beginning of a wave. And our children are a lot hipper than our parents were. And it's going to take another generation. People are going to die of cancer. Of more. cancer. And as the medical people sit here and say, well, we need more research, that's baloney. That's his business. His business is research. He doesn't care if there's a solution. If there's a solution, he's out of business. That business is research. You're talking about research. It's not Dr. Feldman who's sponsoring this study. I'm talking about the, the whole idea of doing these long studies. Mm -hmm. the big Rick, we got it. I, ran out of I ran, ran out of time. Oh, I got to no, cut no, you no, off okay. here. We'll come in lunch. We'll talk more. Oh, there's no free lunch, but I'll be glad to pay one, for it. One, one anyway, one thanks for joining me. And, uh, that was a dig. That was you a know, dig. Hey, nobody gives me free anything. Thanks. Thank you. I can't be honest if I... I feel a little bit guilty, and I rarely feel guilty, for saying so many negative things about Ulster County today. But it comes from a good place, because I'm really trying to make this county better than it is. It is my favorite place, outside of Rhinebeck. Now, one of the things I do every day, and thanks to this man sitting here, this is not what you think, it's ice skating. And I ice skate every day because Saugerties, New York, where the 1994 Woodstock Festival occurred, is now has a great ice rink. And somebody who knows how to use the Zamboni, who makes the ice perfect, 
So I get there at 8.30 every day, and I skate till 10. And you know something? That's the most important thing in my life these days. <laughs> Part of the joy of divorce, I might add. Anyway, as you know, those of you who have watched my show, this show is The Joy of Divorce meets the best of the Hudson Valley. And the best are the people. And that's why I'm doing the show, because I want to say that we can always make things better. So Greg, welcome. Greg Chorvis is the Recreation Director of the Town of Sorgates, am mm -hmm. I correct? That is correct. And how did you ever make this miracle happen? Because they can't do it in Kingston, and they can't do it in Rhinebeck, and this guy did it. Well, a lot of the credit, Joanne, goes to the local uh, Kiwanis Club in Sorgates. They were extremely instrumental in getting the ball rolling. Uh, we were fortunate Jay Feinberg's operation down in Newburgh, Ice Time, at basically a year after Kiwanis undertook this, uh, was upgrading their equipment. And our chiller unit, the compressors, and all the components that are associated with a refrigerated ice skating rink became available, which the Kiwanis Club of Sorgates purchased, uh, donated to the town of Sorgates. And from that point there, it, was, it really steamrolled uh, other civic organizations and individuals uh, got involved with it. The town of Sorgates got behind it. And even areas outside of Sorgates uh, became involved with it. So you, you put a lot of the credit towards me. Uh, I don't deserve all of that credit. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of organizations uh, that deserve a lot of that credit that the public uh, does not see. If it wasn't for them, we would not have uh, the skating rink that we have today, and you would not be skating in Sorgates, New York. I wouldn't be skating, period, because I, traveling to Poughkeepsie, I only could do once a week. It was really mm -hmm. too far from Woodstock. Um, what I am impressed with is the men that work there, and there have been only men. There have been no women at the rink. Um, they're all volunteers, I understand. Is that correct? Uh, no, that is, that, is, that is not correct. The, uh, the concession stand that's operated by the local American Legion post that is staffed by all volunteers. We do use volunteers, say from the Sorgates Key Club, uh, some skate guards are volunteers. Most of my staff are, uh, are paid staff. They are on a part-time basis. And the Zamboni operators, I don't run the Zamboni. Uh, I can't take credit for that either. It's fantastic. Whoever they have done them. that. Um, there's, there's four different individuals that run the Zamboni. And I understand, Joanne, you'd like to get on it someday. Huh? No, I'm terrified <laughs> of machinery and technical items. So no, but it I, is a, I, uh, never, I'm, I haven't done email yet or know how to get on the internet. So once I master that, maybe then. But and I'm glad you did save me for last. Uh, you're, you're closing your show, obviously, as you said, positive and certainly the ice rink in Sorgates. Uh, is very very positive and we're not only looking to cater to specifically Sorgates but the entire region this is the only refrigerated ice skating rink and it's between, covered it's and enclosed. It is covered. it's fully yeah. enclosed uh, between Albany to the north and Newburgh and Poughkeepsie uh, to the south how long will you be open in terms of until March or April or our tentative closing date is March the 25th um, we then we're to going to we're going to reopen um, <laughs> the beginning of November. Uh, if if the need was there and the justification to keep the rink going, as it becomes warmer, uh, it becomes more and more costly right. uh, to refrigerate the. Uh, well, the maybe sheet. somebody will watch this show and they will have a lot of millions of dollars they made in the stock market in the last few years, and they will want to give Sorgates an enclosed rink. Well, that would be fantastic. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be, anyway, that thanks would be for coming and, and uh, giving the good news of Ulster County. And thank you for having me. First time. Thank, thank you. you. Really, and good luck. Thank you.